Hello, everybody. Hello, Gabby. Okay, so this is the next reaction session. So your reaction is very important, okay? Well, before I'm gonna start the session, I would like to just pose this question to you and to everybody, okay? If, if, you, if you could wake up in the morning and suddenly realize that you have something new on you, what is that thing that you wanted to have? Okay. So mm -hmm. an experience. So maybe you would wake up in the morning and realize that you're on a cruise that you've never been on. In a yes. Oh, we can't hear Gabby because of the mic. Yes. Is it working? Perfect! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, <laughs> so we're back. Okay, I think it's a very profound answer for that. We're you know, not a prioritizing possession, but experience instead, right? I think, in a way, possessions is... The mic is not here anymore? Okay. matter in a way so for example now I travel so much um, I survive on like a really small suitcase with 15 kg of like shoes and there's a coat there and then few dresses and you don't really need anything um, so that's one thing I learned that there are things that you think are really important but you don't use them and after a while you realize that they're really nothing you need so possessions are something that come and go while experiences live and last. That's very interesting. Well, the question, the question that I asked just now, there's a, there's a, there's a tricky thing about it is something happening suddenly without you realizing it. So I think it's an extreme makeover kind of thing, you know? Like one day you don't have that and another day you have that already. I think you, your work as an artist and as an art curator has made, it, made this possible for a lot of people, for spaces, for cities. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, well, Hinbus Depot is probably one of the most exciting projects I've ever worked um, for. And uh, it's really interesting how I tell about it to people who have never been to Penang in Malaysia. And, um, one is the idea that it's a completely outdoor space. And it's not, it's not an art gallery, it's an art space. So it's, it's multifunctional, um, where we have events from cinema screenings to talks to art exhibitions. Um, so it's extremely multidisciplinary space that makes me really exciting. And another thing that I think um, makes Inbus Depot really special is that we, um, we really work on providing a voice for emerging artists. So um, most of the artists we represent are uh, someone who is either really young or have a new voice or have a very different voice from what would be the KL or Penang gallery scene. So, um, so I guess that's, uh, that's what makes Hanbus Depot really exciting for me and that's why I'm, I'm still here in Penang. One thing really interesting is that you talk about voice, you talk about engaging the public in a different way through art. I, see, I, think, I think you have, you have made a statement there is that art is not just art just, just because it's beautiful, it also has its function culturally, right? I remember there was once I was having this conversation with you, you said something, the, the statement is so profound, it sounds sound a little bit like this, art should not just reflect culture, but art should redefine culture. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, my education, uh, I have not been studying uh, curation in my university program. I actually studied anthropology. And I guess a lot of my decisions are really influenced by anthropology. It's, it's a big love of mine. Uh, maybe one day I'll go back. 
Um, so, anthropological uh, description of culture is, um, culture is something what people do. So, there are no distinction between high culture, which uh, most of the time people would imagine when you see word culture, we imagine ballet and uh, really fancy evenings with opera and, uh, and really fancy galleries, while the other culture is, is seen as low and not interesting, let's say, people being obsessed by soccer. But by anthropological decision, everything people do is culture. It is an everyday life. So um, the way I personally understand art is that art provides that um, Basically, identity is something that needs to be constantly redefined, and art serves that function of uh, incorporating those everyday matters into one, um, some sort of understanding of the world that is here and now, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, based on what you said, um, I remember last year, Hinbas uh, Depot under Urban Exchange installed a lot of new murals in Penang, right? And it created a discussion among the community about the relevance of these arts. Do you have anything to say about that? Do you, did you receive any criticisms or comments about this is not Penang enough? <laughs> what is your take on that? I'll tell you a really funny story, which I told you before, but um, it's something that totally blew mine and Ian's mind. Ian is my creative partner sitting here. Um, it actually was written in Chinese in Facebook, so she translated to me. It was this um, elderly artist who um, saw one of our artists, it was Bibi Chun, um, at, well, Malaysian, I, I would say Malaysian Chinese because race is so important here, you need to define it. <laughs> but a Malaysian artist uh, painting a mural. So the elderly artist has passed by in a car, he did not exit the car. And uh, because Baby Chun was painting on scaffolding and obviously he was dirty and he was in the sun and he was all covered in paint. Um, the elderly artist made the conclusion that it must have been a Bangladeshi uh, worker. And the criticism was that we hire uh, foreign workers to paint murals for our artists. And it is so far the most interesting thing I heard ever. <laughs> I still sometimes think about it and I'm like, how did he come up with that idea? <laughs> so I think that's like a really, um, what is Malaysian culture that, um, you know, this, if, if an artist is, is dirty and covered in paint, then he must not be an artist, it must be a, a person that is of a lower social rank. Um, so yes, I, I'm really happy all of these questions were raised by what is art? What is the role of artists? What is the social status of artists? And, and things like that. Yes, it was really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, through your work this year, um, you are trying to rebrand and redefine the culture of a place, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, one of another criticism we have received last year was that um, Heritage Core Zone should be left alone. It's, it's a zone that we're gonna conserve and there should be no contemporary art in it. Well, not, not direct statement, but uh, we listened to a community and we decided we shall explore. Um, so the exploration uh, brought us to the mainland, to Batuwav and Raja Oda, which I think is um, sort of an undiscovered gem of Penang, all the industrial charm of the area. And uh, there's actually, it is a really interesting area and it's slowly growing for me as well. Um, so what we're doing uh, this year, our highlight project is um, light sculpture built by Malaysian artist Jun Hao. And uh, it's gonna be uh, really, 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 really big. It's gonna be about 50 feet tall. It's gonna uh, spin over and over four stories high in a sort of abandoned semi-built building. And not only it's gonna be an artwork, it's gonna create a new public space. So the building uh, and the artwork are gonna be there for community use for a year. Uh, the building owner has to donate that space to sort of, uh, it can be used in the various ways. And there's going to be a small park. Yay. <laughs> Interesting.
last year Urban Exchange, the festival that we, uh, the mural fest, it's an art festival, but most of the artworks are murals, right? So this year you have planned to expand the genre, the categories of art, and to put it inserted in different areas in uh, in Penang. So what are other uh, installations or anything that is interesting that you want to share with us? Uh, one one of the projects that um, I'm personally really excited is um, because the festival is urban exchange and we're trying to bridge the gap. So one of it is bridging the gap between mainland and Penang. Um, the project that I'm really, really excited is called um, Artisan Project for Urban Exchange. It's um, an exhibition we're gonna, I'm all inviting you to come and see it. Uh, it's gonna happen 31st of October. And uh, we have paired up seven uh, contemporary artists, young contemporary artists, with uh, seven artisans and trades. So Annabelle is one of our artists and she's gonna be working and creating a contemporary version of Batik. And um, there's about uh, one artist who's working with a wood cover, signboard cover, and creating an Arabic calligraphy. So basically, the whole idea is to create an experience where artists work together for about three months, um, and the the younger artist learns a skill, but also together they come up of sort of an artwork that is um, inspired by Malaysian traditional traits but it is a contemporary version of it. So we're trying to bridge the gap between generations. So artisans and artists coming together to create a new installation, and the installation can be anything, isn't it? It can be... I have no idea. <laughs> and that's the, that's, a, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? The process of creating such things and bringing people from different generations to work together. So, um, as you have shared, you have been working with a lot of Malaysian artists. So, and also a lot of foreign artists too. Uh, Open Exchange, uh, originally, it's an exchange of artists, right? We get foreign artists from outside and then we send ours to their countries. Is it an exchange that way or it's not? We have never had the financial means to uh, send Malaysian artists abroad. It is something that we are attempting to do. But uh, one of the reasons why it's exchanges, um, you bring foreign artists and you show them Penang and they provide you their own interpretation of it. Um, while we encourage artists to spend a lot of time together, so foreign artists teaching something Malaysian artists and then other way around. So it's sort of getting really different people together, to work together, and, and then there's a lot of beautiful outcomes. So last year, um, there's a group of four Malaysian artists uh, from KL and mostly Sabah, uh, called Forsum, and uh, it was the first time we did such a huge festival, and they met a lot of people from Denmark and Berlin, and actually now one of them is in to Paris. So there has been a lot of exposure that came out from them meeting international artists and uh, maybe getting access to galleries, contacts, and things that are, you know, sometimes are not accessible to young artists here. From what I see, Hinbus is really running, uh, doing a very good job in providing a very quality international standard artwork by not just bringing out the best what Malaysian has to offer, but also to get uh, really good artists, contemporary artists from, from other countries come in and create work and leave it for Malaysians and leave it here. So you run the, um, the gallery with Ian. When you see the audience that goes to a gallery, have you ever asked this question, like who is not there yet? You know, who, from the public, who is not there for your gallery yet? I think uh, it is a question we constantly ask ourselves, but it's also a question, um, when we do exhibitions, sometimes a lot of people, as you said, um, people are scared of art, people say we don't understand contemporary art. The way we look at it is we are edu not educating our audience, we slowly saying, come, come, look, it's not that scary. Um, so it's been growing uh, steadily, there's more and more people coming, and uh, the nice thing we can see that people would come to one exhibition and they would come back next month to see another one. So it's a slow process, uh, we don't want to enforce anything because you can't just say to people, come and enjoy art, because it's good for you. 
It's it's not it doesn't work that way. So if you, if we were to ask you to give them something like a few steps that you can take in order to get involved in whatever you do, maybe it's a red exchange this year or anything else that Himbas is doing, what would that be? Well, this is a promo talk now. Uh, we uh, we are looking for volunteers for urban exchange and any help of some sort that we could get. One of the, um, well, as I mentioned, we are really, really, really um, trying to get a foreign artist to get to know Penang. And one of the things we're looking, we want to pair up a, each international artist with someone from Penang who could commit to spend a week with them together to sort of help them out with artwork, but most it's about being there, talking, telling what Malaysia is, sharing stories. Um, so that's one thing that we're really looking people to sort of represent Malaysia and uh, spend time with artists and show why Penang is so special. But and any sort of uh, help would be great. So if you're interested, come, come down and see me or Ian and uh, and we can tell you more of how you could get involved. So they can either attend the festival when it's up, uh, or they can volunteer for any any job, any at all. They can just talk to you about it. And the third thing is to be to, to be the what was that the tour guide to bring you know, to bring the international artists look and introduce our culture to them. It sounds very fun. I would totally do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so thank you, Gabby. Later, we're gonna have a Q&A session, so if you have any question that you want to ask Gabby about work, about the festival, please feel free to ask it, okay? So thank you, Gabby.